Airtable has recently added a new feature to give you even more direct control over your automations. With the new actionable messages in Slack, you can add seamless human checkpoints to approve or reject automations before they run critical actions. In this video, I'll show you how to use actionable messages in Airtable automations step by step. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech. At X-Ray, we use Airtable to build an automated infrastructure for our members, creating an easy touch point between automatic actions and manual approval. If you want to see more tips and tutorials for Airtable, Notion, Zapier, and more every single week, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to turn on those notifications too. Today, I'll show you how actionable Slack messages work in Airtable, and I'll show you how to build an automation that sends an actionable message. So let's get started. So what is an actionable message? In an Airtable automation, an actionable message in Slack allows you to click a button and dynamically update values for a given record. An actionable message is going to look very similar to sending a message on Slack, but there are a few additional fields here. Here is where actionable messages look different. You actually connect the actionable message to a table and a record, and these buttons allow you to update specific fields of that record with just a click. So you can set the field, set the attribute, and when you click that button, information is updated in Airtable. This is a useful way of quickly approving actions and allowing an automation to continue. So now let's take a closer look at using actionable messages in a real automation. Here's the automation we're building today, and it's just a quick example to illustrate actionable messages. This automation will send an email follow-up to any lead that hasn't responded to our initial outreach. By adding an actionable Slack message, we can quickly approve or deny each automated follow-up before it gets sent. If we start at the view that is going to trigger our automation to run, this is the view that will help us follow up with a lead that hasn't responded to us yet. So we see there's a number of filters here to actually whittle down all of the different records that we might have in our leads database. So when a record enters the view in the leads table in the view of no response initial outreach, this automation will run. Then we get our actionable Slack message here that will be sent to, in this case, me directly with a title and a message. And these two buttons here will update a field inside of this initial record. In this case, send follow up will be updated to send or send follow-up will be updated to don't send. Now we need a search step, and we need this search step so we can find the same record that triggered our automation after the Slack actionable message updates that field. So we're gonna look for this record again by the record ID saying that it contains the record ID that started this automation. And when we do that, we can see in the test that we get the record back and also have the new updated field of send follow up. In this case, it says don't send. Now, when it says don't send, it will not continue on into this logic block because the way this is configured, we have conditions that say the send follow up record is exactly sent. So, because this record says don't send, it won't send. But if we had clicked yes, the following two actions would run. So the next portion here is sending the email. So for any record that has the attribute send, we'll send an email dynamically to the email that we found in the search, subject line, static, and a mostly static message with a dynamic name. Then we update this final record again. So it's the same record that triggered the automation inside of the leads table, and we'll update the outreach status to first follow-up, and we'll leave the send follow-up status to be blank. That way, if we wanna send a second or final follow-up, we can, because this status resets to nothing. And that's what we're gonna build today. Now let's go through building an Airtable automation with an actionable Slack message step-by-step. -step. First, we need to create an automation. I'll click on this Create Automation button on the bottom left. We can give it a name. So in this case, we'll call it a Tutorial for New Actionable Messages. We'll select a trigger 
In our case, let's use when a record enters a view. We'll select the table to be leads, the view to be no responses, initial outreach, and we'll use the suggested record, which should come up with one. Great, here it is. Now we can add advanced logic or an action. In our case, we're gonna start with Slack and see this send actionable message button is new. Note that it is not available in Microsoft Teams yet. We'll select our account, choose a recipient or a channel. Next, I'll provide a title for this message. This title is unique to actionable messages only. The message starts with a title, so it's a good way to add some context for the actionable message. I'll call it automatic lead follow-up approval. This message is like any other message that you would send to Slack from Airtable. We just wanna provide some information so the recipient knows what this message is about. And now we can add dynamic data from the name of the person. I like to throw them in asterisks. This will bold them. That way, when the automation runs, you see the person's name in bold. Same thing with the email. Since this is new information every time the automation runs, I like to highlight it with a bold styling. Now we can configure the actionable part of this message. This is where we select the table and we can select the record you'd usually want to find or update the record that started the automation, and that's what we have here. You could have it update a specific record all the time for every automation, but it's most useful if this value is dynamic. Now we'll add buttons to update. You'll see that there's a couple pre-configured options here. There's a default button, a primary, and a danger button. For our primary button, we want to say send follow-up. This will be essentially the affirmative button. We'll choose a field that gets updated, this send follow-up question mark, and we'll select this send option. So now whenever this primary green button is clicked, the field is updated to send. We'll do the same thing for a danger button. And this is going to be called don't send. And in that case, we're gonna update the same field of this record that triggered the automation to begin with to don't send. We're going to set conditional logic later on in this automation to discover whether or not this field is set to send or don't send. Now that both buttons are configured, let's test the action. Note that you can't generate a preview here like you could with a normal Slack message, and you can only run a full test on the action. So let's do that now. When I click on test action, you'll see that it says the test is actively running. This means that Airtable is waiting for the response from Slack for your test message. So when we check Slack, we see that our Airtable bot here has sent us this message and it's waiting for us to respond with send follow-up or don't send. So let's send this follow-up. It says that it's updating and that it's updated. And when we come back to Airtable, we see that the test was successful and also that the field value for send follow-up is updated to send. Works great. Now let's just reset the data by deleting these options here. Leaving them blank is a perfect place to start while we're building this automation. So that way we know when we respond in Slack that it updated to the value that we expected. And now this will let us test the other button. So let's go back to our automation and do just that. We'll scroll down, click on test action. We see that it's waiting for us again. We can come back to Slack. Don't send the update. Come back to Airtable. We see in the test data, send follow-up was updated to don't send. And you can also see that the data was updated to don't send in the grid view. So whenever a record enters the no response view and triggers the automation, we'll get an actionable message in Slack. That record will then be updated based on our choice in Slack. That covers everything you need to do to send an actionable message. Now let's see how the actionable message works in context with a full workflow with a bit of conditional logic. Now we're going to add some conditional logic that determines whether or not the automation should continue. Then 
we'll add a couple of actions so that the automation can send an email follow-up and update the record in Airtable. First, we need to add a search step right here before we add the conditional logic. We need to add a search step to make sure that Airtable is using an up-to-date version of this record. When it retrieved the record in the trigger, Airtable logged all of the record's attributes at that time. So if we refer to the record from the trigger, we'll likely have out-of-date information since the record was just updated by our actionable message. When you're using actionable messages, bear in mind that your data will change while the automation is running. So you may need to use a search step like this to keep everything up to date for your conditional logic. To find the latest version of the record, we can just do a quick search in the leads table to find the record ID. And we're gonna search based off of the condition that the record ID is the record ID that started this automation. So it's gonna be a dynamic value from the first step, and it's gonna be this record ID. And when we test this action, we see that we have one record, Ellen, that includes the send follow-up status of don't send. Now we can add some conditional logic. We want to check the newly retrieved records send follow-up field. And if it says send, then the automation will continue. If it doesn't, the automation will stop. So let's add this conditional logic. And you see the conditions here allow us to insert a dynamic field. Now we want to use not the record that we began the automation with, but the record that we just most recently found. And then just scroll down to field values. This will give us a view of all of the fields inside of this record, and we can select the send follow-up field. Now we could say if the send follow-up field has any of the send attributes, then continue on. We can test these conditions, and we see that the automation would have stopped because we set it to don't send most recently. And if we check our data, we can see that this says don't send. But if we switch this to send manually, go back to our automation, retest the find record step, and now we retest our conditional success the automation would continue. Now we can add actions that the automation will run for records that meet these conditions. The actions we wanna add are send email, which we can grab right at the top here. And we're also going to add a update record right here. Let's configure the send email first. So we're gonna send this email to the dynamic value of the email address of our record that we just found. Now, notice that this says list of emails. Because our find record step is based off of the record ID, we know that we will only ever find one record. So we can use this list of emails object because we know that there will only be one item inside of this list. We can make our subject line still need help with your automations and a message that we grabbed from earlier. And we can generate this preview. Looks great. And last, but certainly not least, we need to update this record. We can select the table for leads and the record ID that started this whole automation. Then we'll select two different fields, the outreach field and the send follow-up field. The outreach field will hard code to first follow-up because this is our first follow-up that we're sending. And our send follow-up field will leave blank so that it will actually erase whatever is populating this field right now. We can generate a preview and see that these fields would have updated. The outreach field would have gone from initial outreach to first follow-up, 
and then the send follow-up field would just erase don't send. Now we're ready to turn this automation on and give it a test. We can click on test automation here, select a record. We'll grab Ellen. Now it is running, waiting for our message inside of Slack. I'll click on send. And the test successfully ran. And I can see the email in our tutorials inbox. Looks like we're all set. Don't forget to copy the automation URL and add it as a description for the view. That way, if anyone has any questions, they know exactly which automation to go to for updating this in the future. Adding human checkpoints is a great way to ensure accuracy with automations and to make sure they don't run when they shouldn't. Actionable Slack messages are a quick and easy way of adding those human checkpoints to your Airtable automations. Hopefully we'll see more actionable steps like this in Airtable soon. If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human. Like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about no-code and low-code automation, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook. You can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can check all those links in the resources board down below. And as always, find your focus and stay in flow. Trying to future-proof yourself? Start designing the way your team works with no-code tools, automation, and AI. In X-Ray's Workflow Designer course, we'll show you how to break down every part of a process to find the best opportunities for automation and how to integrate those automations into your team's daily work. You'll learn how to create time for your entire team, get more reliable results, and give everyone a newfound clarity and confidence in their work. Just go to this URL to learn more. The entire package includes over two hours of premium video content challenging example projects, and tons of helpful resources. The course costs just $250 and gives you lifetime access to a Slack community of workflow designers building systems in dozens of different industries. Space is limited, so join the free waiting list today to get notified as soon as the course is live later this year. Thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon in our workflow designer course.